Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Power Over Tomorrow. I'm your host and resident financial advisor, Tyrone T.S. Mitchell, and we are coming to you courtesy of T.S. Mitchell Financial, LLC, your independent and trusted, independent and trusted <laughs> wealth manager. We are an independent registered investment advisory firm. Uh, forgive, please forgive me because sometimes the the thought process of all that we're trying to do, we're trying to get in a condensed period of time. But needless to say, we welcome you to our program today. You know, our program is a program built upon sound financial information to enable you to make an educated decision concerning your family, your future, and your finances. We here at Power Over Tomorrow are sponsored by some very good people that help make all of this possible. You know, when we think about our sponsors, we we often want to say thank you uh, to, for giving us an opportunity to be able to, to speak on this platform. And our sponsors are Zulina Health, Wellness and Fitness, uh, Paper to Film Production, uh, Revolution Mills, Renovations. So remember, continue to, to support our sponsors and also continue to support this program. Uh, remember, we always say this, that the information that we share here is for educational purposes and is not meant for the solicitation or the inducement or, or promotion of any particular stock or investment. Remember, stocks, investments, and things of that nature do have risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. So continue to hit us up with your questions, your comments, and your concerns on Power Over Tomorrow on Facebook. Visit our website at tsmitchell.com. Hit us up with your, you know, with your questions and, 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 and things that you want to, uh, for us to review as solutions at tsmitchell.com. But needless to say, let's, let's get down, as my grandpa used to say, oh, let's get down to the nitty gritty. And what we want to speak about today is something that we spoke a little bit about last week and that is, can financial issues cause health issues? The correlation, understanding the correlation between your health and your wealth. Uh, we address these topics for the mere fact that, you know, reports continue to come about indicating that those who are, are struggling financially typically make decisions that can cause uh, their health to, to go a myth. And many times when our health goes in a direction that we did not see uh, 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 it coming, it causes greater financial issues. So what we want to do is we want to continue to talk about this. And the reason is, is it has to become uh, paramount in our education. When we focus on the aspects of improving our spiritual health, it also improves our financial health because all that we have and all that we are has come from a gift, a gift of God. Uh, it's been said that life is a gift from God. What you do with that life is your gift to God. So we want to help you be in the best possible position to give the best gift. You know, I remember when I was a kid, and he used to play things, and I hated this in high school, not, not, not high school, but in grade school. And yeah, and when I say hate, yeah, oh, that's a strong word. Yeah, that's how much I didn't like it. Especially, <coughs> especially when we had this thing called grab bag. And, and as a little kid, we would go out, you know, I would go with my mother, and we would go buy a, 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 a toy that we had to take and then put it in a grab bag. And I remember one time, uh, um, it's not, not a, uh, uh, it's a kaleidoscope, I think it's called, where you look in this tube and you turn it and it has all different colors and, and oh man, it was, I remember having that and we bought that and my mother said, okay, now you gotta put it in the grab bag for school. And I was angry because I wanted that. And, and so when we put it, I put it in the back, I was hoping I'd get that back. You know what happened? Somebody else chose it. And I ended up getting something that I thought was of less value. 
I didn't get that gift that I wanted. And, and so think about this. God has given you something valuable. And giving it to you is something called life. Your physical being, your financial being. And then when it's time to for him to redeem that, he doesn't want less value. He wants greater value. He doesn't even want what he gave. He wants greater value. You know, we remember the parable of, 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 the, of the ruler that gave out the talents. He gave one, uh, five, one, two, and one, one. Now the five came back with five more, came back with 10. The two came back with two more, came back with four. The one came back with one, didn't do anything with the talent that he had. And for the first two, the five and the two, he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. And the one that came back, he said, you know, depart from me. I know not of you. We don't want the Lord to say depart from us. That's why it is important. When we take this time, to recognize the the correlation between our physical health and our financial health you know what we want to do is be in position so that when we help others we're helping others we can either go across or come across we can physically go across or come across with the finances to help others so there is a correlation now the articles that's going to go on with this program, and you, you'll, you'll see it posted, is called Healthy Body, Healthy Pocketbook. Healthy Body, Healthy Pocketbook. It, it goes on to say that, you know, people save. We save for a variety of things. Uh, we save for retirement. Some We save for our, our, our first home, our first car, uh, college education. Uh, you know, just just a vac you know a vacation. You know, we make plans and we spend time making those plans, and all of the activities that we do to save. Uh, do you not know that healthcare may be the biggest price tag of it all? Our health is important when we think about the issues of. Of, of of diabetes, obesity. You know, while we may feel like we're living it up by eating what we want to eat, doing what we want to do, oftentimes we're not living it up, but we're living it down. Living it down because there is a price that will be paid. You know, when you get to the point where now you have to take medication because you didn't take care of your health, you know, your body is not as healthy as it should be. And now your pocketbook is suffering because things come with a price tag. Uh, there's talk, as we've been hearing so much in the political realm, uh, about re, uh, re, what was it? replace and repeal, replace and repeal the Affordable Care Act. Well, what is coming down the pipeline now, so to say, is that uh, this current administration wants to enact a, an association type of health plan. Now, they're making it seem as if, as if it's the latest and greatest big thing since sliced bread. Well, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as Scripture tells us, that there is nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. This association plan that the current administration is, is promoting for small businesses is nothing more than what was called in the past affinity plans, where like businesses come together to buy or to, 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 to cover health insurance costs in like-minded ways. Now, many of these plans in the past, as a matter of fact, the Attorney General of New York and a couple, and I think Massachusetts are, are, are suing the current administration, all right, bringing a lawsuit against them, the reason is, is because history has shown these types of plans have been uh, 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 susceptible to fraud, uh, embezzlement, okay? Uh, why? Because they're not regulated. You know, we talk about being regulated. Folks always say, we don't want government in our business. Well, there are times where you need government in your business to help regulate it. 
you and I, the 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 the, the, the small man on the totem pole, don't have the the lawyers and and, and also the sometimes the political clout to make companies do uh, what they should. You know, we're hearing over and over again. Now, when we deal with stocks, when we deal with those things as far as uh, investments, you know, they are not, and when I mean they, I mean the, the financial managers of the, of the portfolios. Their goal is truly not to help us, but their goal, the financial managers of corporations, their goal is to increase the share value for their shareholders. That's their primary goal. And you can't blame them because if I am a shareholder, which I am, of companies, and which you should be too, uh, um, I would want the people in charge of the finances of that company to make uh, as much money as possible. But however, there is something that we have to be aware of, and that is social responsibility. You know, there is a responsibility that we have to society. Do not tell me you're making me money, but this, you are destroying my environment. Do not tell me that, you know, uh, McDonald's or, or any other fast food chain is, is a good investment and, and, and they are producing you know, high profits. So we're going to invest in them so I can increase my, my, you know, my pocketbook. But yet, if I find that the, the, the ingredients that they're using are filled with carcinogens and now I'm being subjected to forms of cancer, now I'm no longer as healthy as I should while my pocketbook may seem to be growing because of this investments. But if they, if they, the, the ingredients that they're using, if they're business practice causes harm to the environment to the to to the to the customers then what happens is is it worth is it worth the risk is the return you're taking worth the risk so we have to think about that when it comes to where we're investing and we also have to think about that in regards to how we are handling the money and the lifestyle that we've grown accustomed to. So think about this. Let's get informed. Get informed. Medical expertise and advice are, are constantly changing. They're constantly changing. It says, keep yourself up to date on healthcare news. That's why I'm reporting that what's coming down the pipeline is some, some uh, uh, association plan uh, when it comes to healthcare for small business owners, you have to stay informed. So now when you're able, able to make decisions, your decisions are being made upon sound financial information and not emotion or fear tactics. So make sure you stay informed of healthcare issues, particularly when it's regarding issues that may affect you or those related to you. Ask your doctor for help ask them for questions, ask questions. You know, just recently I went to, the, I'm looking for my glass of water. You know me, I gotta have my glass of water with me. I got my, my tall drink of water. Hold on a second. Mm. Yes, sir, that's good there. Especially on the last, the last couple of days, it's been over a hundred degrees here in South Kakalaki. But you know what? I take it. I will take it because I am truly aware that this is a day that the Lord has made. So I will rejoice in it because there are some places where it's freezing cold. And, and, and so if you, if nature tries to please man, nature wouldn't be nature. So we just deal with it, grow with it and enjoy it as we can. And I'm just thankful that I have a tall drink of cold water. Now in your financial life, when things get heated, things get hot, you need to make sure you got some cold drink of water. Our physical being, and, and, and water is a purifier. Water is a cleanser. When we think about information that helps us get better and stronger when it comes to our finances, it acts as that living water that purifies us, that cleanses us, that, that gets us in the right realm. You know, things such as, as Kool-Aid and soda 
uh, alcohol, that stuff may go down good. It may quench your thirst temporarily now. But when things get tough, you need to let that go because all that sugar and that Kool-Aid, I know many of you, you grew up on it, and some of you who didn't have enough water would just eat the Kool-Aid powder. <laughs> Am I right? And yeah, I know. I, I used to be there. But at, when I was a child, I did childish things. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. And you know what? Now, my point was this. Talk to your doctor. Uh, just the other day, I went to the doctor and I told him I was having a little stiffness and, you know, my shoulder and everything. And he says, well, you know, we can give you a, you know, a shot or, or you can take some ibuprofen. He said, yeah, you can take that for, for, you know, two weeks or so. Then I said, well, wait a minute, doc. Isn't it true that if you take that type of ibuprofen for, for more than three days, that it can cause symptoms or, or you have uh, side effects in other areas of your body, you know, and with other your uh, 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 organs. He says, yes, you know, that's a chance you take. Now, even though, or although we trust our doctors, you still need to ask questions. All right, maybe this is my doctor calling right now. Hold on a second. Nah, that's not them. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hang up on that one. You know what? Sometimes folks need to just call into the show, post your, post your questions. All right. Now, when I asked that question, I wanted him to understand that I do respect your, your, you know, your, 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 you know, you know, your expertise, but you still need to ask questions. I still need to ask questions. Now I'm going to make my decision. Do I take a one-time shot in my shoulder or do I take uh, uh, other medication that could uh, adversely affect other organs. When we don't ask questions, we put ourselves in jeopardy. So now, here's the point. If I take too much medication on something and it causes problems in other organs, what do I have to do to heal those other organs? Take more medication, <laughs> all right? So now it's a domino effect. So when we focus on, on getting informed, we should take our time to, to, to look at what it is that we need to do. Many times when folks rush into decision-making when it comes to their health, it causes problems down the road, not only with their physical being, but also with their pocketbook, because sometimes things can lead to one thing after another, after another, after another. So the point is don't be afraid to be informed. Don't be afraid to ask questions when it comes to your health and when it comes to your finances. Ask those questions because if they are not going to entertain your questions, then you shouldn't be doing business with them. That sounds so good, I gotta say it again. If they are not going to entertain your questions, then you shouldn't be doing business with them. The next thing we want to point out, it says develop or maintain a healthy lifestyle. This is a way you're going to be able to, to, to improve your financial being by maintaining a healthy lifestyle. When it, what it boils down to is this, it's simple wisdom. If you eat healthy and exercise on a regular basis, you, and, and, and you begin to limit the fats and the sugars, and uh, you know, and what you do is now you replace those things with you know whole grain, fruits and vegetables. You may say, well, you know, it's easier to buy a happy meal than it is to buy you know a, 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 a half bushel of of fruit. While it may be easier, is it most effective for you? You have to look at. How what what is it going to cost down the road? Now, just because something comes easy doesn't necessarily mean it's something that you need to do. And just because something may be challenging doesn't mean that you need to to tuck your head in the sand and not do it. You know, and one of the programs we did today, I talked about knowing the price and value of a stock, meaning this. When the price of a stock fluctuates, when it goes up or down, 
we need to know why is it doing that. So if a stock is is at is selling at fifty dollars a share, and now the price goes down ten percent, five dollars, or it goes down twenty percent, ten dollars. Now let's say if it goes down twenty percent, and now it was once worth fifty dollars, but it's now worth forty dollars. Now some may say, well, I'm losing money. And others may say, well, I'm going to buy the stock because I always want to buy when it's low and I want to sell when it's high. But here's the difference between price and value. If the price goes down uh, um, 20% from $50 to $40, if the price of the goes down because of, of competition, all right, that may be something you want to watch. All right, but if the price goes down because of the of the fact that it the 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 platform of that business is outdated, that it is no longer uh, uh, um, keeping up with with the times or keeping up with technology, keeping up with the growth of its competition, then buying a stock just because the price is down, that stock may not have good value. Because think of this. It's been reported now, GE, General Electric, who has, was one of the original companies on the Dow Jones, all right, one of the original companies on the Dow Jones from since uh, 1898, for, for over 100 years, GE or General Electric was on the Dow Jones, was average, and that was one of the companies that they watched over. Well, they're being removed and, be, and being replaced by Walgreens the drug store. So they're being replaced on the Dow Jones. Why? Because General Electric, the price had gone down, but the value of the stock is not the same. They've had financial problems, uh, the overexpansion. They went from an electric company, and then they tapped into uh, financial markets. And in the financial markets, they went into long-term care. And, they, and, they, and, and what eventually happened was they began to see losses in other areas and they had to recoup and had to back away. So the value of that overall stock went, went down. The price went down and the value went down. Now, you find another company that may have a dip in their value or a dip in their price of 20%, okay? But the price going down is because they are restructuring their business so that they can expand. So what does that mean? That means the value of the stock is, 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 has a greater potential for growth. Many companies, as we know, will in the last quarter of the year begin to lay off a lot of people, um, begin to cut back on expenses, make changes on health on, on healthcare or benefits. Why do you think many companies have open enrollment during the last quarter of the year from October through December. That's because they are looking at uh, cutting their expenses, uh, reducing their overhead so that come January 1st of the next year, they stand in good position to have a higher uh, earnings per share or price value. So, when we look at the cost of, of things, when we look at the how to determine a, a better lifestyle, that is we have to pay attention to the price of the foods we buy and the value that it brings to us in the long term. We may be able to get food, cheap food, happy meals, and, and all that dollar menu stuff now, but what is the value to our health? And how will it affect our pocketbook in the long run? If the foods that we're taking right now causes our arteries to clog, if the food that we're taking right now causes our blood pressure to rise, if the foods that we're taking in right now causes our waistline to expand and the body mass index to grow, eventually what will come about are issues on healthcare that will require either surgery to lose the weight uh, or, or surgery to open up the, uh, uh, um, the, the blood vessels uh, to cleanse these things out, that stuff costs money. 
And when we are not aware of the value, the long-term value, we put ourselves in jeopardy of having a weak pocketbook. So get informed as well as develop and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Another thing we want to point out is we need to learn how to relax. You do. Too many folks are walking around with hypertension, high blood pressure. You need to learn how to relax. You know, years ago, and, and the actuaries of insurance companies will tell you this. Why is it that a man and a woman the same age, can and the same age, all right, the woman will outlive the man by an average of five years. That's why we have more widows than widowers. And I know some of you may say, well, the, the women drive the men to death. Well, you know, but I'm not going there right now, okay? But, but, but here's the point. Here's the point. One of the key factors that help uh, determine the mortality rate for men was their stress level. Men had more heart attacks. Uh, we had more high blood pressure. Uh, you know, we were under a lot more stress than, than women. That typically was the way uh, for several centuries. But during the World War II, okay, uh, during that period of time where women began to go into the, the, to, into the workforce, and then now we have a society where it requires not something, it's, it's often you know, uh, uh, not stated, but it's required that we are living in a two income households where it takes two incomes to provide for one household. When we find ourselves that highly uh, 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 um, charged up with debt, it causes stress levels on both the husband and the wife. So now we see women walking around having the same stress levels as men, okay? And, and, and what that does, it, it affects their longevity. So when we don't learn how to relax, stress can uh, be detrimental to your health. Maintaining friendships, we say, uh, focusing on hobbies, and taking time to relax may help, ins may help ensure good mental health. Mental stability is a growing concern when it comes to healthcare issues. Uh, folks are dealing with areas of depression. Folks are dealing with the areas of, of Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, uh, because of stress-related issues. The, when you are having issues like that, it causes deep, deep concerns on your financial well-being. You have to pay. You have to pay for these things. So now, learning how to relax. Find something you enjoy doing. You know, and don't let it be finding comfort foods, all right? That, that is a, uh, you know, that, you know, what you're doing, you know, you, 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 uh, uh, um, you, you're diminishing the returns of your healthy lifestyle. So learn to relax, relax. You know, sometimes you just have to recognize that there are things that you just can't control. You can't. But for the things you can control, do your best. You can't control, you know, you know, you can't control the rain that falls from the sky, but you can do your best to have an umbrella. You can do your best to prepare for it. All right. The scriptures say, you know, the man that builds his house upon a rock. All right. When Christ says, you know, they, uh, those who follow his commandments is like a man who builds his house upon a rock. Uh, uh, when the rains descend and the floods ascend and the winds blow, and beat on that house, all right? When it's built upon a solid foundation, it will stand. But a foolish man will build a house on, on sand. So when the rains descend and the floods ascend and the winds blow and beat on that house, 
the house will fall. Not just fall, it said, and great will be its fall. I remember growing up on Long Island and I would see homes out on the east coast of Long Island in the Hampton areas. You know, they were million dollar homes built on, on, on beachfront property, built on stilts overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. Beautiful, beautiful. But I remember when our hurricane came through, I think it was either Hugo or Andrew, one of those big hurricanes back then, came in and moved away the sand. Move the pool, you know, the water came in and pulled the sand out. Now, those stilts did not have anything to support it up. And what happened when the stilts, when the sand went, the stilts broke and the houses tumbled into the Atlantic Ocean. They built their house on sand. Think about the mudslides in California. They build their houses over, over the cliffs overlooking the valley on the side of the mountains, but that land is not solid. So when it rains, the rains fall, roll down the mountainside and it takes the sediment, it takes the soil with it and it comes mud and it slides down. So now when that soil, that land is moved away, the house has nothing to stand on. And I say this because when we do not understand the correlation between our health and our wealth, we are building our house on sinking sand. Our health, you can't replace your health. I have yet to see anybody in the hospital that says uh, they want to be there. You know, but everyone who's out there working hard to make money, Sometimes we have to recognize you can uh, spend a lot of times trying to make a living, but you don't make a life. You can make a living, but you need to make a life. You don't want to end up being the, the richest person in the graveyard because you don't see a hearse following, excuse me, you don't see a U-Haul following a hearse. I, you know, and now I know some of you may remember when I told the story about a gentleman by the name of Walter Hudson, and the gentleman was over a thousand pounds, and they couldn't fit him in the hearse. So what did they do? They had a flatbed U-Haul. Now that was the only time I've ever seen a U-Haul behind the hearse. But in this scenario, I'm talking about the all that you accumulate in life is not going to be packed up and sent with you. There was a gentleman one time that said. You know, very mean guy, and he, and he told his wife he, he wouldn't spend any money on his on his family. And, and he says, "When I die," he told his wife, "When I die, I want you to put all my money with me." And she said, "Yes, honey." I would. And she was very accommodating, and everybody knew how mean he was. And when he died, everybody said, uh, "Did she do? Did she do? You know, did she put all his money with him?" And they asked her. She said, "Yes, I did. I did exactly what my my late husband said." And they said, "Where? How did you? Why did you? How did you do it?" She said, well, before they closed the coffin, I wrote him a check. And I put the check in the coffin. <laughs> all right. So, so she gave him his money. All right. But, but the key to it is you're not going to take it with you. Don't be the richest person in the graveyard. What I mean by this, you can work so hard to make money, but you don't take care of your health. You don't get a chance to enjoy it. Your there's a correlation between the, how you handle your life and how you handle the, the money that you get for life. There, there's a correlation. So, so be mindful. Now, another thing it says, learn the numbers. We often say count the cost. Learn the numbers. And you know the numbers that I'm speaking of, the numbers about staying healthy mean what? Know the numbers for your, for your blood pressure. Know the numbers for your blood sugar level. Know the numbers for your body mass index. Why? Because when you know those numbers, you work to, to keep it healthy. The average, they say the healthy heart rate is 120 over 80. Okay? So you want to get to the closest that is possible. When you get to the 130s, all right, between anything over 120 over 80 to 139 over 80, 
they begin to say that you pre-hypertension. If you start getting into the 140s, okay, and, and the number goes over 80, uh, over 90, you, so if you're 140 over 90, you're basically in the area of hypertension, high blood pressure. They're going to put you on medication. And the medication costs money. And that's when, when you're putting money towards your medication, that means that's less money to invest. Okay? So the first investment that you have to make is just like I say all the time. The first business that you have to run is the business of you, the business of self. The first investment you need to make is in yourself, in your health. That way you can be around to enjoy what God has blessed you with. And of course, we want to look at taking preventive care measures. Preventing a disease or illness can be much less expensive and much less painful than having to treat it. Preventing a disease is much less painful than having to treat it. How can you prevent it? It's much less costly to prevent it than to treat it. So taking time to know your health, taking time to be informed, taking time to develop a healthy lifestyle, taking time to relax, uh, taking time to know your numbers, taking time to do preventive care, it will help you take advantage of, of things that will put you in a position to help you be better with stewards as far as your finances. So what I'm saying is this, ladies and gentlemen, is that we need to understand that it is important that we change unhealthy behaviors. Most Americans know the fundamentals of good health. Most Americans know the fundamentals of exercise, proper diet, uh, sufficient sleep, uh, regular checkups, all right, and not smoking, no excessive alcohol. Uh, we all know that stuff. Yet, despite this knowledge, despite this knowledge, the chances of people behaving, behaving in such a manner is, is less likely than it is if they continue on the course uh, that is uh, negative. Meaning this, sometimes we know the way, but we find it hard to walk that way. Think of all the New Year's resolutions that many of us have made. When it comes to, yes, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. Yes, I'm going to do that. We, we make these New Year's resolutions and we feel gung-ho about it and we carry it through for maybe, how, how long do you go? two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months. But typically, before the before March, before the end of March, many folks have discarded the New Year's resolution. And they say, oh man, that's hard, that's hard to do. When you do something, at least, try this out now, all right? Try doing something at least three to four times a week. And then from out of the uh, three to four times a week, and then three weeks out of the month, okay, at least two and a half months out of the quarter, all right, at least uh, 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 three and a half quarters out of the year. And the reason why I'm saying doing it that way because you you want to take that that new year that annual goal and break it down into small increments. How do you eat an elephant? One small bite at a time. So break that big goal down to small steps and then take those small steps, but do it on a consistent basis. When it came time, I remember the days when I was thinking, okay, I'm going to one day ride 2,000 miles in a year on my bicycle. When I first started, and I would do small amounts, small amounts. And then I, I found myself riding with people who thought on oh, no, those small amounts too. And I will always work to, to, to try and get 2,000 miles a year until I had a client. We sat down. Matter of fact, we went on a bike ride a couple of years ago. And I introduced him to cycling. 
just like, like someone introduced me to cycling. So, but here it is. And, you know, he said, well, you know, how, how have you been doing? I said, well, you know, I, I'm going to probably get about 2,500 miles this year. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, since I introduced him, he wouldn't be anywhere close to that. I said, what about you? He says, well, I'm, I'm going to be about five or six. And I'm thinking, well, you know, he just thought he made me five or six hundred. He said, no, five or six thousand. I said, what? He said, five, I do five or six thousand miles a year. And I said, how did you do that? And then we talked about it. Small increments on a consistent basis over a course of time. And the next thing you know, I took that into effect. In six months, I did over 5,000 miles. So now this year, my goal is anywhere between seven to 10,000. How, how can that be? It's just taking small increments. You know, you got 365 days in a year. And if I have 365 days in a year, if I write X number of days uh, for X number of miles or X number of days, I get there. And for those of you, you know, who follow me on, on the cycling events on a, on a program called Strava, uh, Strava.com, just type in T.S. Mitchell, and you'll see the, how the group of people who are like-minded, we produce, when it comes to cycling, er in areas of, of five, six, 10,000 miles a year, and we stay healthy. That, that is a healthy lifestyle. It becomes a part of our lifestyle. Now, I'm not saying that's something that you have to do, but when you find something you enjoy doing and it improves your health and it helps you change from unhealthy behaviors, stick to it. Don't just let those, those New Year's resolutions come in and go out the window. Plan your New Year's resolutions not on January 1st or, or while you're sitting at the, at the table on Christmas and New Year's, all right, plan it in October, just like you run your business. Remember when we talk about planning a business, we say come the last quarter of the year, come October through December, you should be looking at your business plan so that come January 1st, you hit the ground running. So for this year, we hit the ground running when it, or, or hit the ground cycling, all right, not starting January 1st, no, we, I started this program back in October to condition my mind, my body, and my physical spirit to accept that challenge. So when we do the same type of approach when it comes to our health and our finances, we condition our mind, we condition our bodies, and our spirit to accept the challenge that's before us. Scriptures tells us, the way a man thinketh, so is he. So when you come to that New Year's resolution, now, whether it's six months away or wherever the time may be, you are already conditioned and prepared. Already. Now I'm going to share a quick story. I remember this. I, I, I like stories. You know why? Because I try to give an application to, to the way we walk and talk uh, and, and getting the mission done. Now, I remember many years ago when, when just about, about after I you know, proposed to that, that beautiful young lady I was courting back then, and, and we're going on, although I did not have that wedding band on my hand, that one right there, I did, although I did not have it, my mindset while we were dating, while I was courting, was that she was my wife. So when it came time to get married, I was already prepared and acting as if I was married by the way I devoted myself to one woman. Now, when we hear situations about folks getting married and they're having a seven-year itch and all that stuff, listen here, you can have that seven-year itch, but you better be careful who you let scratch it, okay? Now, when you, when you prepare yourself before the event, when the event comes, you're already there. That's how you handle challenges. Don't think of marriage as a ball and chain, but think of it as a blessing before man and God. How are you conditioning yourself? 
Don't think about children as, as crumb snatchers, but think about children as an inheritance, having your quiver full, They're the ones who carry your legacy. All right, that's what we do. Don't, don't think about you know, your body as something that's aching and, and failing, but think of your body as the temple of God. Protect it, nourish it, and, and keep it to the point where it will be able to bring God glory uh, and bring joy to you and benefit to those you serve in the community. So when you do these things and, and you look at the finances, so when we talk about whether we said you're preparing yourself for marriage before marriage or preparing yourself for your New Year's resolution before New Year's, preparing yourself for, for sending your child to college before they have to fill out their, their financial aid forms or, or even preparing for your retirement. Don't prepare for something when it's already here. Prepare before time. That's how you do it. That's what preparation is. It's, it's positioning yourself before the event occurs. You can't guarantee the future but you can prepare as it comes. When we do that, when we do that, you know, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Christ says, I go to prepare a place for you. All right? If it was not so, I would not say that. So remember, heaven is a prepared place for who? Prepared people. This life on earth is our chance to prepare. You know, God has given us health and he has given us wealth, all right? And we have to prepare both. It is not one is, is, is uh, uh, exclusive of the other. No, because when we are healthy, we can help those who need physical help. Uh, when we are financially healthy, we can help those who need spiritual help. Now, money is not uh, 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 the, the root of all evil, but the love of money is. We always say what? Love people and use money. Don't love money and use people. Source Nation, it has been my pleasure to be able to provide you an understanding, an opportunity to, to talk about and to hear about healthy body, healthy pocketbook, changing unhealthy behaviors. Uh, we're going to change these unhealthy behaviors by what? Uh, we're going to start working with doing things as we think about it. We're going to prepare. We're going to take action. We're going to maintain. All right. We're going to be considerate of those things that we need to do. Get, get the knowledge. Remember, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Knowledge is knowing how to do it. Wisdom is knowing what to do. But in all that you do, get understanding. Understanding is knowing why you do it. Why do you want to make sure that you have a healthy pocketbook and a healthy body? Is because they both are gifts from God. Your health is the number one wealth that you can leave uh, for, for your family and understanding of how to stay healthy. And your wealth is the number one financial thing that you can leave for your family so that they can continue on with the legacy that you that you develop for them. And your spiritual health is the number one thing that you can leave for your family and leave for yourself. Because those things, that spiritual health, is what gets you where you need to be with the right relationship with God. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you the ability to make wealth. Source Nation, SRN TV Live. I am Tyrone T.S. Mitchell. This has been Power Over Tomorrow. So remember, in your walk of life, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind forever be at your back. May the sun shine upon you with its warmth and may the rain fall upon you ever so gently. Until the next time when we cross each other's path, may the God of heaven hold you in the hollow of his hands. I'm Tyrone T.S. Mitchell. This has been Power Over Tomorrow. Be well, be blessed, and be your best.